Are Real Madrid just a Champions League team? Does Mauro Fellaini get the respect he deserves? Mauro Cardi plays Father Christmas. UEFA make a big call on Arsenal's Europa League tie. And of course, because it's Wednesday, we have today's great debate. That and more coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host, Matt Froelich. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. Last night, goals from Gareth Bale and Lucas Vasquez saw Real Madrid run out 2-0 winners against Roma and seemingly put behind them their terrible form in the league. What is it about the Champions League that just has Real Madrid playing a lot better? After losing 3-0 to Ibar, they show up to last season's semi-finalists and make it look like light work, even without Cristiano Ronaldo. This wasn't the only talking point of the night though, as before the game, Roma legend Francesco Totti was inducted to their Hall of Fame after 24 years and 786 appearances at the club. Unfortunately, in that time, he didn't really win much though, so he can't really go down as one of the best of all time. But as for Real Madrid, can they go on despite their poor league form and win the Champions League yet again, the fourth season in a row, the fifth time in the last six years? I'm going to leave a poll right here so you guys can have your say. So well done Jose, you definitely deserve to celebrate so wildly by slamming loads of water bottles down after throwing off Fellaini and winning 1-0 in the last minute against Young Boys. Totally deserved, nothing wrong with that at all. As for Fellaini though, does he actually get the respect he deserves? I feel like people think of him as sort of a joke player because he's always the plan B. No one ever talks about his footballing ability. It's always just elbows and being a target man in the last minute when you need a goal. Now evidently this works, but I still think he deserves more respect. He's managed to carve out a career at Manchester United in the last five and a half years, so he definitely deserves a bit for that, at least. And next, on to some early Christmas news, where Mauro Riccardi from Inter Milan is playing Santa Claus. To say thank you for finishing joint top goal scorer in Serie A last season with 29 goals, the first time an Inter player has managed to do that since 1959, Icardi bought all of his teammates a Rolex watch. Before the game against Spurs tonight at Wembley, he presented each of the 23 squad members from last year with a brand spanking new watch. Not only is that going to be a ridiculous amount of money for Icardi, but that's a pretty awesome present if you're not really in the first team, but just around the squad. Now, firstly, I think this is a pretty cool thing for Icardi to do, and I'm sure his teammates are delighted. However, on the flip side, if that's what he's getting his teammates, what on earth are his family going to be expecting? I'm talking cars, new houses, absolutely everything. If you could just throw around 23 Rolexes just like that in the dressing room. Up next, in a quick look ahead to tomorrow's Europa League tie, where Arsenal's game against Volska has been moved to Kiev. Now, I know I probably didn't say that right, but I think you get my drift. Amid security concerns, it's been changed to the Olympic Stadium, where the Champions League final was held back in May. This means that Arsenal don't have to do the six-hour round trip by bus from Kiev to where the match was originally placed, all after a four-hour flight from London. This means that the Arsenal players can get home a bit earlier and have a few hours extra sleep ahead of preparations for their North London derby on Sunday. However, even if they do have this extra sleep and more time to dream about scoring the winner against Spurs in the derby, not all dreams come true. And definitely for Spurs fans, they'll be hoping that there's a lot more congestion on their travel to and from Ukraine. And finally, because it's Wednesday, we have our great debate. This is where all our one footballers from the newsroom put their heads together and come up with a question to really get you guys thinking. Of course, to check out all of their answers and my answer, you can go and check out the app to look for it later on today. However, as for this video and as for you guys, I want to know what is the biggest surprise for you in football this season? It could be a player, a coach, a manager, VAR, the Premier League title race, the European League title race, absolutely anything. But for me, the biggest surprise this season is that not more managers have been sacked. I feel that Jokinovic at Fulham was harshly done by, considering how well he did to get them promoted and the investment they gave him and the squad in the summer. So aside from that, I just don't know how the likes of Mark Hughes, Neil Warnock and Roy Hodgson still have a job. They've been in their current clubs last season as well, and I'm sure that the board didn't see anything which fills them with promise in their ability to keep them up this season. All three are fighting relegation, and it really wouldn't surprise me if all three go down should they stick with their age-old managers. But that's all from me for today. Make sure you let me know down below everything on today's daily news and you can also hit the like button whilst you're down there. Don't forget to click here to check out all the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball and until next time, I will see you guys later.